Hey sons and daughters, it is Arden and Christian. We are so excited because today we are talking about something revolving around the Great Commission and that is being the church. Christian, what is being the church? look like to you? So being the church to me is actually being the church, going outside of the four walls and taking the church out into the world. I think we see that, you know, so much in the Bible, but today we almost kind of limit ourselves in what the church looks like. And, you know, we love the local church. We love yeah. the capital C church, but we want to challenge us and we want to challenge you to think differently about what it means to actually be the church. Yeah, we think, so honestly, the church is the tool. Like God made the tool that's going to save the world, and that is the church. And too often times we get into this mindset, as Christian was saying, this mindset that it's like we go to church for ourselves and it's within the four walls, but then that's it. And that's not what it's supposed to be. You know, one of my favorite verses for this year, honestly, has been Ephesians 4.12, where it just talks about, it says the, the uh, um, God appointed the, the prophets, evangelists, teachers, uh, preachers, all for the equipping of the saints to do the work of the ministry. And oftentimes we think it is our role just to come to church, as I said, we come to church, we kind of get a good message, and then we go back, and then we're like, okay, well, maybe I need to get someone else to church. And so sometimes we try to invite someone to church, but it's actually, it's not even that. Like, it's so much bigger. It's that the Bible says it's the equipping of the saints. We are the saints to do the work of the ministry. And so it's that we are supposed to do the work of the ministry. We're supposed to do what the Great Commission says and to go into all of the world and make disciples. Um, you know, one of the biggest things, we did, a, we did this whole poll through Instagram, and the biggest thing that people were saying that they needed, that they wanted, was community. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's the cry of our generation is we want community so bad. You know, we're, we are so connected, but it's this, it, it's oftentimes this fake yeah, connection like where it's like a instant connection, but yeah. it's nothing kind of lasting. And when you talk about that verse or when we talk about it, I instantly think about Jesus and how he never did his ministry just in one place. Like he was constantly going to new cities, meeting new people, gathering his community around him and saying like, hey, let's go do this together. Let's do this on the move. Let's continue to grow and continue to bring new people in by us going to them, not expecting this to come to church. I mean, what is it? John Maxwell says the quote of there's around over 50% of people will never step foot in a church. So kind of like realizing that, like how do we bring church to other people instead of thinking we have to get them to one spot? Yeah. How do we mobilize the church and its efforts? Yeah, the way that I've kind of always seen it, and this is the way I like to say it, is that we kind of feel like we've set this massive table. And like at churches, we'll be like, hey, there's room for anyone at the table. Mm -hmm. And what we do as the church body, and I, I'm, I'm guilty of this, is that I just stay at my seat when there's an empty seat right next to me and I don't ever, I don't ever like I'll, I'll try to be like, hey yeah, you should come to church, but I never actually leave the table and go do ministry and bring someone back. And so that's what I see as the Great Commission, as where we can't just, we can't just continue just like Christian said, the 53% that will never step foot in a building, like in a church building, we can't just expect that they're gonna eventually make it to God or that eventually they're gonna have someone cross their path. It's like, you know, we have to be actively seeking. You know, that, that statistic honestly scares me um, because thinking about how it, with our mindset that we have as the church today, that 53% possibly could never experience the love of Jesus or the grace of God is, is absolutely mind-blowing to me. Uh, and so, you know, I know that for us, you know, we've really been challenged this past season yeah. um, just to set up community. Uh, we started having just kind of, we watch, uh, we watch at our house, we just invite whoever is, whoever is in our contact list, honestly, we just tell them to come over, or people that we come across, and we just say, hey, come to our house. We're just gonna gather. We're gonna watch a. We're gonna watch a sermon, yeah. and then we like play. We either play like Mario Party, Super Smash Bros. I'm big on Super Smash Bros. Christian gets way too, way too competitive. Okay. It's amazing. If she's really good. Too. <laughs> it's being the church, being competitive. It's good. It's good. But yeah, but we just do something that connects us. Yeah. And just kind of gathers us together. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think you know something on a practical side for people. Um, is that really like figure out what it is that you connect with, like what it is that's your interest, um, what you feel like you really like, I really enjoy, maybe it could be, I really enjoy business books and like I wanna take people through business books or I really enjoy sports and I wanna go take people out, play golf or play baseball or something like that. Is like try to do something that's of interest, that's gathering people that would never step foot in a church. Mm -hmm. And through that, you're able to become 
the church. You're able to be the church in those situations where you're able to encourage, inspire, talk scripture, pray for one another. Yeah. Um, have have the using it as a tool. Yeah, because yeah. because here's the thing, like, you know, you can have a life changing message on Sunday morning, and that's awesome. Like that, that I mean I've had I've had messages that have impacted my life. Um, but I have had very few uh, messages that I can remember, like, and tell you, like, exactly what it was. But the harder conversations that I have, um, they all revolve around relationships. Like, I can tell you all the times that I've sat down with my friends, and we've had those harder conversations where I'm like, hey, man, I'm, I'm really going through this. So they're telling me, hey, I'm really going through this. And that's where the, the discipleship happens. That's where the growth mm -hmm. begins. And so as you're doing that, you get to come together as a church body, of course, inside mm -hmm. the church because the local church is so important and, and gather together and see disciples made. Yeah. And I think we, we look oftentimes where we've been looking at the Church of Antioch and yeah. um, we love church. I don't want that to be miscommunicated. We love that we get to gather, um, but we've been looking at the Church of Antioch and how they didn't just gather for a Sunday service. They gather for coming in and out and teaching and preaching and equipping, and it's more of a doing life together. So it's not necessarily there's anything wrong with the four walls of the church, but it's, it's us changing our mindset of what that looks like yeah. and how we utilize, how we communicate and um, how we form relationships within that. And I did, um, I've grown up in church my whole life, but I've kind of had this mindset of, I go to church, sometimes people will come there, you know, if they get saved, awesome, I hope the preacher preaches a good message <laughs> when I bring someone. But um, I did an internship at Church of the Highlands and it really changed my mindset on this of how do I even bring the gospel, bring words, and yeah. um, connect with people outside of church because it almost feels like sometimes in our culture that church is the only place we can talk about God without maybe feeling like a crazy person. Yeah. <laughs> and when I was doing this internship, it was really like a challenging of how do I practically share this? How do I share my faith? Um, how do I even just tell people about what God's doing in my life? And I found that um, at my job, in my college classes, like it just begins to come out naturally when you have that community. Like during that internship, we did more than just the services. We had those yeah. relationships. We had those times of just telling and it almost became natural. Yeah. So when I was around other people, it would just flow out. And some people would look at me like I was crazy. Yeah. But some people would look at me like I was crazy yeah. and then be interested. And eventually they would come to church, but it's just starting as us being the saints. Yeah. And like, how would you even say kind of to, tap this off, how can we actually be the saints? I think it's, it's honestly, it's comfortable for, it's easy for us to talk God within our church communities. Like that's easy. Yeah. But it's when you get outside of your church communities, like Christian said, it's like when people look at you like you're weird. Um, and I heard the quote one time as a preacher who said this, and he said, uh, he said, he said, if you are comfortable where you are, he said, chances are that you are exactly uh, where the devil wants you and nowhere close where God wants you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the what we've got to do as the practical. Is we've got to see, okay, look, honestly, there's going to be uncomfortable situations. I just had a conversation with one of my one of my friends who isn't saved, and it was uncomfortable inviting him to church and having these conversations. But you've got to get to your place or your place where you feel like, hey, man, this is not this is not what I'm used to. And I'm going to keep evangelizing. You know, we I used to do a, a personal evangelism class when I was in um, college, and we did it where you had to go and evangelize to one person in the semester. And it was the scariest thing for everyone because they're like, okay, we're going to have to talk to someone on the bus or talk to someone in the supermarket. But we felt like when we actually did it, it became more and more natural to have those conversations. And I see that is the developing of a disciple. You know, the disciple is someone who brings God um, wherever they are. They, they are Jesus walking this earth. And so I just feel like that is that what you have to do practically is get yourself into those uncomfortable situations, get people around you around interest. Like mm -hmm. we just played football within this weekend. Yeah, we just played football this weekend and that was all done within relationships of getting the door open and we were able to invite unsaved people and then being able to have those follow-up conversations. If he wasn't too competitive. Yeah. Away. Yeah. <laughs> as long as nothing, nothing bad happened in the competition. You gotta when you I gotta, yeah. Pass. Yeah, that's it. I get too competitive. As I said, Christian gets too competitive. <laughs> I get too competitive. Yeah. But I that's love it. what you said. It's, 
you know, I think oftentimes we think of, if I'm gonna go evangelize, I have to stand on the street corner, yell at people that turn or burn, but it's, it's just like you said, like get in relationships with people outside of your comfort zone. Um, meet someone at Starbucks, meet someone at the grocery store, and just begin to develop that and let it flow out of us yeah. of what God's doing. And yeah. I think that's how we be the church. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, we love you guys, and we are so excited about what you guys are gonna be doing as you become the church. We appreciate you guys and we'll see you next time.